This exhibition is called Wet Room and it was previously shown at Spike Island in Bristol and this is the second version of it that is being shown at the Delaware Pavilion in Bexhill. The work was made over a three year period <coughs> which encompassed my second pregnancy and the COVID-19 pandemic. I painted the wet room when I was eight months pregnant, I think. So it, for me, it's really testament to some of the dreamy, submerged, um, archetypal and watery realm feelings that I was having at the time. And it's an exquisitely sensitive time emotionally and psychologically, but also you are obviously diminished in some ways physically, but I felt this kind of very intense energy to get these, these images out. And the tiles were laid flat, so it was, quite swi it was quite like swimming. It was quite a smooth and fluid and swimmy type of experience making them. And I was thinking about the womb as this space for, for percolating new life and becoming and the creativity that that gives you, but also again about the, the fear of death and the anxiety around childbirth and the pandemic was just around the corner, although I didn't know that at the time. Whilst I was making this work, I was really um, fascinated by the sacred sites which are unique to West Cornwall, which are called Fugus. And they are chambers underground or just above ground um, in which you, you creep into and then there's another, you go through a thing called a creep passage and then there's a sort of bigger chamber. They're not all the same, there's five fugus, but they all follow a fairly standard um, layout. But you get to this internal cavern, which is completely pitch black and granite and you have to be quite humbled by the experience of getting into it. Um, I, most of the time you're crawling, it's usually very damp, very muddy. It isn't frightening at all. It's actually a very comforting space where I feel, have felt very protected. And it's very womb-like. It feels very healing and like a very sacred and protective space, yeah. And this wet room initially was meant to be a sort of, um, somehow a description of how it felt, some of the visions that one might have. I spent a long time in 2016 being past life regressed in a particular fugu, which was Boli fugu, near, <clears throat> near Land's End. And it was a very, very intense psychedelic experience. So to me, it makes sense that these sorts of images would be a result of thinking thinking through the sacred and powerful experience you can have in a fugu. This vision's making me want to cry. <laughs> I wish it would go away. <laughs> Just allow anything that comes to mind. Allowing it to be there. For the Delaware Pavilion, I have made a new tile work titled Persephone Holding a Pomegranate Seed, which is made in reference to a 26-foot sculpture of Persephone that was meant to be made by the sculptor Frank Dobson and placed outside the Delaware Pavilion <clears throat> with her back to the building, staring out at the sea, but was never really realised. Since this exhibition uses the myth of Persephone as one of its grounding um, themes, I decided to make my own version of Persephone with the attitude that I felt she should have towards her mythic experience of being abducted, raped, dragged into the underworld, and <laughs> then becoming the goddess of fertility and rebirth. So my Persephone holding a pomegranate seed is a sassy kind of young woman. She's quite angry, rightly so. My interest in making this exhibition has been 
to work with different female archetypes that, that venture between the real, the symbolic and the imaginary and tr that triangulation. So in the exhibition, there's, there's a quite straightforward portrait of my second daughter having her first bath. And then there are more um, mythical or historical characters such as Nefertiti and Cleopatra from ancient Egypt. My interpretation, of course, of Persephone, as previously mentioned, there's Balbo, who's part of the Persephone and Demeter myth. There's more than one portrait of Demeter, as imagined by me, but also an appropriated image from a painting by Eileen Agar, who's an artist I've referenced quite a lot over the years and in this exhibition. In May Queen, I'd, I'd made a series of paintings that I were call, was calling coffin-shaped paintings, and I was thinking about the painting as a sarcophagus and the container for one human body, and how that was quite a powerful um, way of thinking about how to make a painting, and that, yeah, a painting that can carry the weight of life and death. So I spent a lot of time in the Museum of Witchcraft and Magic Library in, in Boss Castle, which is a very excellent collection. And I was looking at a lot of books about alchemy. So a number of the images on this wall come from various alchemical manuscripts and texts. During that time, I became aware, partly through discussions with the curator there, um, of this relationship between the practices of the so-called cunning folk of the West Country and um, systems of magic and occult methodologies that they felt had been handed down directly f from ancient Egypt, especially when it came to banishment rituals. The Eye of Horus is a symbol that you find across the West Country and it features regularly in the Museum of Witchcraft on different objects. It was a very precious, protective charm for West Country witches and cunning folk. Hence the fact that the Eye of Horus is featured on the walls of the wet room. But this led me to think about the kind of potency and the, po the potency of these characters from ancient Egypt that we know very little about but can project our contemporary fantasies onto which led me to make the work Her Beneficence which is a very quickly done in my studio portrait of Nefertiti. I'd been in Berlin at the end of 2019 and seen the famous, world famous of course, um, Nefertiti bust in the Pergamon Museum and I'd just been so possessed by her and I've had that feeling that I couldn't tear myself away from her and I think it's quite common to have that reaction to her and I thought about other artists and this female lineage of artists who've made work from that bust and I thought I, I challenged myself to make a very very quick very large painting of her to see if I could invoke this kind of female power figure in my studio and see what effect she would have on the work. And for me, painting is a really good way for thinking through psychoanalytical processes. And I think that they correspond, the processes of painting and the processes of psychoanalysis correspond really effectively. I find painting is a very kind of cathartic experience. And I personally have to dredge up a lot of personal history, art history, and really go back layer after layer after layer until I can get to a space where the work starts to become cohesive and make some kind of sense materially and emotionally and psychologically and have this kind of resonance.